So there's uh, system prompts mm -hmm. that are made public. You tweeted one of the earlier ones for Claude 3, I think, and then they're made public since then. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to read to them. I can feel the thought that went into each one. Mm -hmm. And I also wonder how much impact each one has. Um, some of them you, you can kind of tell Claude was really not behaving. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to have a system prompt to like, hey, like trivial stuff, I guess. Yeah. Basic informational things. Yeah. On the topic of sort of controversial topics that you've mentioned, one interesting one I thought is if it is asked to assist with tasks involving the expression of views held by a significant number of people, Claude provides assistance with a task regardless of its own views. Mm -hmm. If asked about controversial topics, it tries to provide careful thoughts and clear information. Claude presents the requested information without explicitly saying that the topic is sensitive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And without claiming to be presenting the objective facts. It's less about objective facts, according to Claude, and it's more about our large number of people believing this thing. Mm -hmm. And that that's interesting. I mean, I'm sure a lot of thought went into that. Can you just speak to it? Like, how, how do you address things that are at tension with, quote unquote, Claude's views? So I think there's sometimes an asymmetry. Um, I think I noted this in... In, I can't remember if it was that part of the system prompt or another, but the model was slightly more inclined to like refuse tasks if it was like about either say, so maybe it would refuse things with respect to like a right wing politician, but with an equivalent left wing politician, like wouldn't. And we wanted more symmetry there um, and, and would maybe perceive certain things to be like, I think it, it was the thing of like, if a lot of people have like a certain like political view um, and want to like explore it, you don't want Claude to be like, well, my opinion is different. And so I'm going to treat that as like harmful. Um, and so I think it was partly to like nudge the model to just be like, hey, if a lot of people like believe this thing, you should just be like engaging with the task and like willing to do it. Um, each of those parts of that is actually doing a different thing because it's funny when you write out the like without claiming to be objective. Because like what you want to do is push the model so it's, it's more open, it's a little bit more neutral. Um, but then what it would love to do is be like, as an objective, <laughs> like it would just talk about how objective it was. And I was like, Claude, you're still like biased and have issues. And so yeah. stop like claiming that everything, I'm, I'm like the solution to like potential bias from you is not to just say that what you think is objective. So that was like with initial versions of that, that part of the system prompt when I was like iterating on it, it was like. So a lot of parts of these sentences. Yeah. Are doing work. Are, like, are doing some work. Yeah. That's what it felt like. That's fascinating. Um, can you explain maybe some ways in which the prompts evolved over the past few months? Because there's different versions. I saw that the filler phrase request was removed. The filler, it reads, Claude responds directly to all human messages without unnecessary affirmations. The filler phrase is like, certainly, of course, absolutely, great, sure. <laughs> Specifically, Claude avoids starting responses with the word certainly in any way. <laughs> that seems like good guidance. But why was it removed? Yeah, so it's funny because like uh, this is one of the downsides of like making system prompts public. Is like I don't think about this too much if I'm like trying to help iterate on system prompts. Um, I, I, you know, again, like I think about how it's going to affect the behavior. But then I'm like, oh wow, if I'm like sometimes I put like never in all caps, you know, when I'm writing system yeah. prompt things, and I'm like, I guess that goes out to the world. Um, yeah, so the model was doing this. It loved for whatever, you know, it like during training picked up on this thing, which was to to basically start everything with like a kind of like certainly. And then when we removed, you can see why I added all of the words, because what I'm trying to do is like in some ways, like trap the model out of this, you know, it, it would just replace it with another affirmation. And so it, it can help like if it gets like caught in freezes, actually just adding the explicit phrase and saying never do that, it then it, it sort of like knocks it out of the behavior a little bit more, you know, because it, if it, you know, like it, it does just for whatever reason help. And then basically that was just like an artifact of training that like we then picked up on and improved things so that it didn't happen anymore. And once that happens, you can just remove that part of the system prompt. So I think that's just something where we're like, um, Claude does affirmations a bit less. And so that wasn't like, it wasn't doing as much. I see. So like the, the system prompt, works hand in hand with the post-training and maybe even the pre-training to adjust like the, the final overall system. I mean, any system prompt that you make, you could distill that behavior back into a model because you really have all of the tools there for making data that 
you know, you can you could train the models to just have that trait a little bit more. Um, and then sometimes you'll just find issues in training. So like the way I think of it is like the system prompt is the benefit of it is that, and it has a lot of similar components to like some aspects of post-training, you know, like it's a nudge. Um, and so like, do I mind if Claude sometimes says sure? No, that's like fine. But the wording of it is very like, you know, never, ever, ever do this. Um, so that when it does slip up, it's hopefully like, I don't know, a couple of percent of the time and not, you know, 20 or 30 percent of the time. Um, but I think of it as like, if you're still seeing issues in the, like each thing gets kind of like, uh, is, is costly to a different degree. And the system prompt is like cheap to iterate on. Um, and if you're seeing issues in the fine tuned model, you can just like potentially patch them with a system prompt. So I think of it as like patching issues and slightly adjusting behaviors to, to make it better and more to people's preferences. So yeah, it's almost like the less robust, but faster way of just like solving problems. Let me ask about the feeling of intelligence. So Dario said that Claude, any one model of Claude is not getting dumber. Mm -hmm. But there is a kind of popular thing online where people have this feeling like Claude might be getting dumber. And from my perspective, it's most likely a fascinating, I would love to understand it more, psychological, sociological effect. Um, but you as a person who talks to Claude a lot, can you empathize with the feeling that Claude is getting dumber? Yeah, no, I think that that is actually really interesting because I remember seeing this happen um, like when people were flagging this on the internet and it was really interesting because I knew that like, like at least in the cases I was looking at, it was like nothing has changed. Like yeah. it literally, yeah. it cannot, it is the same model with the same, like, you know, like same system prompt, same everything. Um, I think when there are changes, I can, then I'm like, it makes more sense. So like one example is um, there you know, you can have artifacts turned on or off on cloud.ai. And because this is like a system prompt change, I think it does mean that um, the behavior changes a little bit. And so I did flag this to people where I was like, if you love Claude's behavior and then artifacts was turned from like the a thing you had to turn on to the default, just try turning it off and see if the issue you were facing was that change. But it was fascinating because, yeah, you sometimes see people indicate that there's like a regression when I'm like there cannot like I you know and like I'm like I'm again you don't you know you should never be dismissive and so you should always investigate because you're like maybe something is wrong that you're not seeing maybe there was some change made but then then you look into it and you're like this it is just the same model doing the same thing and I'm like I think it's just that you got kind of unlucky with a few prompts or something and it looked like it was getting much worse and actually it was just yeah, it was maybe just like luck. I, I also think there is a real psychological effect where people just, the baseline increases and you start getting used to a good thing. Mm -hmm. All the times that Claude says something really smart, your sense of its intelligence grows in your mind, I think. Yeah. And then if you return back and you prompt in a similar way, not the same way, in a similar way, the concept it was okay with before and it says something dumb, you were like, you're, that negative experience really stands out. And I think at one of, I guess the things to remember here is the that just the details of a prompt can have a lot of impact, right? Yeah. There's a lot of variability in the result. And you can get randomness uh, is like the other thing. And just trying the prompt like, you know, four or 10 times, you might realize that actually like possibly, you know, like two months ago, you tried it and it succeeded. But actually if you tried it, it would have only succeeded half of the time and now it only succeeds half of the time. Um, that can also be an effect. Do you feel pressure having to write the system prompt that a huge number of people are going to use? This feels like a, an interesting psychological question. Um, I feel like a lot of responsibility or something. I think that's, you know, and, and you can't get these things perfect. So you can't like, you know, you're like, it's going to be imperfect. You're going to have to iterate on it. Um, I would say more responsibility um, than anything else. Though I think working in, AI has taught me that I like, I thrive a lot more under feelings of pressure and responsibility than <laughs> I'm like, it's almost surprising that I went into academia for so long. Cause I'm like this, I just feel like it, it's like the opposite. Um, things move fast and you have a lot of responsibility and I, I quite enjoy it for some reason. I mean, it really is a huge amount of impact. If you think about constitutional AI and writing a system prompt for something that's tending towards super intelligence. 
Yeah. And potentially is extremely useful to a very large number of people. Yeah, I think that's the thing. It's something like if you do it well, like you're never going to get it perfect. But I think the thing that I really like is the idea that like when I'm trying to work on the system prompt, you know, I'm like bashing on like thousands of prompts and I'm trying to like imagine what people are going to want to use Claude for and kind of, I guess like the whole thing that I'm trying to do is like improve their experience of it. Um, and so maybe that's what feels good. I'm like, if it's not perfect, I'll like, you know, I'll improve it. We'll fix issues. But sometimes the thing that can happen is that you'll get feedback from people that's really positive about the model. Um, and you'll see that something you did, like, like when I look at models now, I can often see exactly where like a trait or an issue is like coming from. And so when you see something that you did or you were like influential in like making like, I don't know, making that difference or making someone have a nice interaction, it's like quite meaningful. Um, but yeah, as the systems get more capable, this stuff gets more stressful because right now they're like not smart enough to to pose any issues. But I think over time, it's going to feel like possibly bad stress over time. How do you get like signal feedback about the human experience across thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people? Like what their pain points are, what feels good? Are you just using your own intuition as you talk to it to see what are the pain points? I think I use that partly. And then obviously we have like, um, so people can send us feedback, both positive and negative about things that the model has done. And then we can get a sense of like areas where it's like falling short. Um, internally, people like work with the models a lot and try to figure out um, areas where there are like gaps. And so I think it's this mix of interacting with it myself, um, seeing people internally interact with it, um, and then explicit feedback we get. Um, and then I find it hard to know also, like, you know, if people if people are on the internet and they say something about Claude and I see it, I'll also take that seriously. Um, so. I don't know. See, I, I'm torn about that. I'm going to ask you a question mm -hmm. from Reddit. When will Claude stop trying to be my puritanical grandmother, mm -hmm. imposing its moral worldview on me as a paying customer? And also, what is the psychology behind making Claude overly apologetic? Yep. Uh, so how would you address this very non-representative rhetoric? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, some ways I'm pretty sympathetic in that, like, like they are in this difficult position where I, I think that they have to judge whether some things like actually say like risky or bad um, and potentially harmful to you or, or, or anything like that. So they're having to like draw this line somewhere. And if they draw it too much in the direction of like, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm kind of like imposing my ethical worldview on you, that seems bad. So in many ways, like I like to think that we have actually seen improvements in on this across the board, which is kind of interesting because that kind of coincides with like, for example, like adding more of like uh, character training. Um, and I think my hypothesis was always like the good character isn't again one that's just like moralistic. It's one that is like like it respects you and your autonomy um, and your ability to like choose what is good for you and what is right for you. Within limits, this is sometimes this concept of like corrigibility to the user. So just being willing to do anything that the user asks. And if the models were willing to do that, then they would be easily like misused. You're kind of just trusting. At that point, you're just saying the ethics of the model and what it does is completely the ethics of the user. Um, and I think there's reasons to like not want that, especially as models become more powerful, because you're like, there might just be a small number of people who want to use models for really harmful things. Um, but having them, having models as they get smarter, like figure out where that line is, does seem important. Um, and then, yeah, with the apologetic behavior, I don't like that. And I like it when Claude is a little bit more willing to like push back against people or just not apologize. Part of me is like, it often just feels kind of unnecessary. So I think those are things that are hopefully decreasing, um, over time. Um, and yeah, I think that if people, say things on the internet it doesn't mean that you should think that that like that could be that like there's actually an issue that 99 percent of users are having that is totally not represented by that but in a lot of ways i'm just like attending to it and being like is this right um do i agree is it something we're already trying to address that that feels good to me yeah i wonder like what claude can get away with in terms of i feel like it would just be easier to be a little bit more mean mm. But like you can't afford to do that if you're talking to a million people. Yeah. Right. Like I, I wish, you know, because if you, I've met a lot of people in my life mm -hmm. 
that sometimes, by the way, Scottish accent, if they have an accent, yep. they can say some rude shit yeah. and get away with it. Yep. And they, they're just blunter. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's a, and the, there's some great engineers, even leaders that are like just like blunt and they get to the point. And it's just a much more effective way of speaking somehow. But I guess when you're not super intelligent, you can't afford to do that. Or can can can, can have like a blunt mode? Yeah, that seems like a thing that you could, I could definitely encourage the model to do that. I, I think it's interesting because there's a lot of things in models that like, it's funny where, um, there are some behaviors where you might not quite like the default, but then the thing I'll often say to people is you don't realize how much you will hate it if I nudge it too much in the other direction. Mm -hmm. So you get this a little bit with like correction. The models accept correction from you, like probably a little bit too much right now. You know, you can over, you know, it'll push back if you say like, no, Paris isn't the capital of France. Um, but really like things that I'm, I think that the model's fairly confident in you can still sometimes get it to retract by saying it's wrong. At the same time, if you train models to not do that, and then you are correct about a thing and you correct it and it pushes back against you and is like, no, you're wrong. It's hard to describe, like, that's so much more annoying. So it's like I, like a lot of little annoyances versus, like, one big annoyance. Um, it's easy to think that, like, we often compare it with, like, the perfect. And then I'm like, remember, these models aren't perfect. And so if you nudge it in the other direction, you're changing the kind of errors it's going to make. Um, and so think about which of the kinds of errors you, you like or don't like. So in cases like ap apologeticness, I don't want to nudge it too much in the direction of like almost like bluntness, because I imagine when it makes errors, it's going to make errors in the direction of being kind of like rude. Whereas at least with apologeticness, you're like, oh, OK, it's like a little bit, you know, like I don't like it that much. But at the same time, it's not being like mean to people. And actually, like the, the time that you undeservedly have a model be kind of mean to you, you probably like that a lot less than than you mildly dislike the apology. Um, so it's like one of those things where I'm like, I do want it to get better, but also while remaining aware of the fact that there's errors on the other side that are, that are possibly worse. I think that matters very much in the personality of the human. I think there's a bunch of humans that just won't respect the model at all. Yeah. If it's super polite. And there's some humans that'll get very hurt if the model's mean. Yep. I wonder if there's a way to sort of adjust to the personality, even locale. There's just different mm -hmm. people. Uh, nothing against New York, but New York is a little rougher on the edges. Yep. Like they're, they get to the point. Yep. And um, probably same with Eastern Europe. So anyway. I think you could just tell the model is my guess. Like for all of these things, I'm like, <laughs> the, the solution is just, always just try telling the model to do it. And right. then sometimes it's just like, like, I'm just like, oh, at the beginning of the conversation, I just throw in like, I don't know. I like you to be a New Yorker version of yourself and never apologize. And then <laughs> yeah. I think Claude will be like, okie doke, I'll try. <laughs> or it'll be <laughs> like, I apologize. I can't be a New Yorker type of myself, but hopefully yeah. I wouldn't do that. When you say character training, mm -hmm. what's incorporated into character training? Is that RLHF? Or what are we talking about? It's more like constitutional AI. So it's kind of a variant of that pipeline. So I worked through like constructing character traits that the model should have. They can be kind of like shorter traits or they can be kind of richer descriptions. Um, and then you get the model to generate queries that humans might um, give it that are relevant to that trait. Uh, then it generates the responses and then it ranks the responses based on the character traits. So in that way, after the like generation of the queries, it's very much like it's similar to constitutional AI, it has some, some differences. Um, so I quite like it because it's almost, it, it's like Claude's training in its own character because it doesn't have any it's like constitutionally AI, but it's without without any human data humans should probably do that for themselves too like defining in a aristotelian sense what does it mean to be a good person okay cool <laughs>